A Michigan man could face prison time for reading his wife's email. He suspected her of cheating. She was, and now he is in trouble with the law. Fox's Andrea Isom takes a look. I discovered that my ex-wife, my wife then, mm -hmm. had uh, been in a prolonged relationship with her second husband. I'm her third husband. She told me he had a history of abusing her. Checking her phone records, it seemed like they were really close. They, they spoke a lot. They communicated a lot. And I was concerned that she was not just moving back in in that situation, but she was bringing our daughter into it. So... I just wanted to confirm that. According to Oakland County Prosecutor Jessica Cooper, checking somebody else's email behind their back is breaking the law. So this email checker was arrested and charged. In published reports, the prosecutor even called Leon a hacker. Pretty asinine inflammatory statement. Claiming he violated the hacking statute. However, Leon's attorney, also named Leon, says that's a lie. There's no mention of looking at somebody's email in the statute. And I just think that whoever issued the warrant made a mistake. Certainly, she's taking the position that she didn't want him looking at her emails. She told me passwords before, and she kept them with the computer and notebooks. It was, it was very visible. Leon's now ex-wife, Clara Walker, did not want to do an interview. Her attorney, Michael McCulloch, issued this statement. Please be warned that Mr. Walker is a self-described actor who lost primary custody of his child for good reason, brought out during four days of testimony in a divorce proceeding. After the divorce was final, he is still facing felony criminal charges. He has nothing to lose by publicizing and spinning his predicament. I think you can respect your spouse's privacy, and, and I did respect hers until I felt there was an endangerment there. But as far as being criminal, that's silly. And that is also the debate. Here now, Barry Sorrells and Peter Vogel. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, both attorneys here to talk about the law, also about privacy issues. All right, I am sure a lot of people at home are going, oh, wait a minute, I've done the same thing. Barry, you ever done a little snooping yourself? You know, I can't really remember any snooping I've done. Yeah, not that you uh, admit but, uh, to. As a matter of fact. Well, you know what? A lot of people, <laughs> I'm guilty. I mean, I've done it, but my husband's given me his password, so I guess I haven't snooped those out. But, I mean, a lot of people have done this. So, really, somebody should be charged and uh, with a crime because of this? Well, I think legal experts uh, will debate whether or not the statutes uh, apply to situations like this. Some say, can uh, argue that it does. Some say it doesn't. But the question is, is, is this the highest and best use of our criminal justice system? Sure. And I think the answer is no. These type of matters can stay over in divorce court if there's conflict in the marriage, but we don't need to be prosecuting husband and wives for reading each other's emails. It's not what we uh, ha need to use our system to do. There's more serious matters. Yeah, divorce court may be a marriage counselor as well. Peter, let's talk about these privacy issues because I guess the way I see it, it's husband and wife. If nothing's going on, if there's no cheating, if there's nothing sneaky, I mean, what's the big deal? Well, from the privacy laws, uh, I think there is an expectation that people have certain privacies, but the reality of what we do today and use social media and uh, internet and email and the way we communicate, I think people do share this kind of information with this expectation. There are an average of over 350 email, million emails a day and uh, 55 million tweets a day and 1.9 trillion text messages last year, and there's this expectation. I think people are going to share that information. Well, it's not really private. You know, it's funny, too. I guess when I think of if a, if a, a piece of mail comes to my, the house from my husband, that's not something I would open because I think, oh, that's a, that's a piece of paper, it's mail, I'm not going to do that because I, I see that as something sneaky and wrong. But for some reason, an email, it's like, yeah, it's email. Well, there have been a lot of uh, psychologists that have analyzed emails and the people say things in emails they'd never put in writing and that they would never say face to face. So the email itself is kind of an unusual social phenomenon. And social media has only made yeah. it a little crazier with Facebook and MySpace and, sure. and uh, Google and everything else. I think we know that here at Fox 4, a lot of the anonymous emails we get, people feel very bold and able to put whatever in an email. All right, so let's talk about this guy in, uh, in Michigan. Barry, if he's found guilty, what does that say to all of us? Stop it. Don't be well, nosy. I, I mean, you know, have communication I mean, with your spouse. The, I've read the Michigan statute, and Texas has one that's similar, and it was not designed for to prosecute these type cases. It was designed for stealing uh, work secrets and, and hacking in the computer right. systems. But it is so broad that it can be technically used to prosecute people for reading other people's emails without their consent. The bottom line is, uh, whether it's a criminal law or not, I mean, it's a privacy issue. You shouldn't be doing it. It's a boundary by violation. You shouldn't be uh, reading other people's emails without their consent. Right. But uh, on the other hand, there is a criminal law that if things turn south, for example, in your marriage, and now you're in divorce court and people are wagging each other's finger at the other one and they're looking for ways to get someone in trouble, then this statute could uh, 
you know, be there and be used against someone. Yeah, and that's when it might come up, you know, in this situation, if, when, if, you, if it does go to divorce court. And people get awfully angry in divorce court and use yeah, whatever it gets resources ugly over they there. think right. that, that they right. need. But, but I think the other part of it is when people sign up for uh, email systems, they never read the terms of service. They never, agree, they never understand what yeah. they're agreeing to. And yet, at the same time, if they are sharing information, as Barry suggests, they're already doing. When does, when does that time limit end? Hmm. Is it when they file for divorce? And if they have email uh, and password access, I mean, it becomes very uh, gray as to whether they're committing a crime or not. So people change your passwords often, I guess, especially after divorce, if that happens. Guys, thank you. Barry, Peter, we appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Rich.